Well, it's 4 o'clock on a Friday. That's good news. Yeah, it is. Well, the bad news is things are changing. The snow is going to be rolling in later tonight. We could see it all come in, bringing heavier snow to the higher elevations. We've got a live look from our, C our CDOT cameras in Silverthorne. Yeah, you know, it looks a little wet at this point, but really it's looking pretty good. The roads, and we've seen a lot of sun here in Denver. Um, the snow is going to start, though, later tonight, and that could make for a messy weekend of ski travel. That's a nice way to put it. A live look closer to Denver. This storm is a hard one to predict. Our meteorologists have been telling that, us that all week long because some areas could see nothing while others could see a few inches. And Kathy, it's just been so darn warm. Yes, and that's weird, right, for yeah. early February. And the groundhog predicted an early spring, but for many of us, it's going to look and feel a whole lot like winter when we wake up tomorrow morning. Today, though, not bad. I mean, you almost wouldn't know there was a storm coming in. Temperatures in the 50s, mostly cloudy skies. Snow's already starting in the Colorado high country. Temperatures are above average, but not in the 60s like we've enjoyed all week long. That was nice. Center of circulation coming through the four corners into southeastern Colorado. Flow around this low is counterclockwise, so it's pulling up warm Gulf moisture and bands of moisture that will back up into the front range. You're noticing some showers in eastern Colorado, snow in the high country, not much happening in Denver, which I say is a good thing considering the evening drive is about to get underway. But look at the mosaic of color in the high country. Focus in on the red areas, your favorite ski resort, one to two feet of snow by next Monday. But Denver now under a winter storm watch for three, maybe six inches of wet slushy snow. Heavier amounts west and south, but the potential is there. Could an inch of it fall as rain? Absolutely. It's going to rain first in Denver later tonight, flipping over to snow by the time you wake up tomorrow, flipping back over to rain. And some of the rain on the I-76 corridor will be heavy rain, heavy rain in February. And then we'll see the snow continue off and on until about midday Sunday. And some of your accumulation amounts starting to come up a little bit. It's sloppy, it's slushy, it's not all that cold, but you go above 6,000 feet, it's a whole different weather world. So increasing clouds and mild weather tonight with showers, rain showers late. Coming up in the main weather segment, we're tracking this powerful weekend storm. Yes, Denver under a winter storm watch, and we'll detail the heavy mountain and foothill snow amounts coming up in just a few minutes. All right, a lot to pay attention to depending on your zip code and your mm -hmm. elevation. A very dynamic, very unusual storm, as Kathy was just talking about, with a variety of precipitation coming in the next couple of days. Meteorologist Corey Ruppenhagen is hoping everyone is keeping an eye on what's happening outside because scientists need help with that data, right? You're just one man, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need a lot of help out there. And really, the uh, information, the data that citizen science can gather can help improve forecast models and really the forecast in general. And all it takes is answering one very simple question. What is falling from the sky right now? Snow falling when the temperature is above freezing is a very Colorado thing. Maybe you're driving and you look at the thermometer in your car and you notice that it's 35, 36 degrees Fahrenheit, and yet there's snow falling. And you might have wondered, did we just break the laws of physics? Research scientist Megan Collins says snow doesn't actually break the laws of physics, but it doesn't exactly play by the rules either. What we're seeing out of this project is that that transition between rain and snow happens at different temperatures in different storms and it happens differently across different regions. She's running a research project called Mountain Rain or Snow. She's asking citizen scientists to log into an app and simply make a note of when the precipitation around them changes. From the mountains, the cities, and the plains, more than 40,000 reports have already been made. And I know some people are always like, more data is a little, like, can get a little noisy, but I think for our purposes, more data is perfect. Water resource engineer Nay Young Her says the data gets used to improve satellites and computer models that can make snowfall forecasts better and also help warn when rain is going to fall on snowpack. Something that hasn't happened much in the Rocky Mountain region yet, but could become a problem in the future. And so like flooding implications there is a really big deal. Also just like people to know how stable is our snowpack. Some people love walk, watching the weather and love talking about it. And this is a way to kind of um, share that energy with, with scientists to make a difference. 
And so right now we still have a little bit of warm sunbeams raining down in the golden area, but the precipitation will be coming soon about this time tomorrow. So in 24 hours from now, we should see that ultimate transition into snow and we should see some really heavy snow here in the Denver metro area at that time. But Tom, Kim, in between then and now, we could get a, some of those scattered individual uh, cells that could produce some pretty interesting stuff. Rain, snow, hail, sleet, grapple, thunder snow. I think Tom's personal favorite, thunder grapple, all possible. Thunder grapple. <laughs> you know, normally I uh, watch television still in black and white, but uh, I've, I've purchased a color television just for the uh, variety that I'm going to see on my Doppler radar on my TV screen pretty soon. We're going to see everything. Oh man, Tom, let's do this. This is going to be interesting and fun. Let's just buckle in. Let's see what goes down. <laughs> Whatever color we can get, it'll be great. In living All color. Right. We know Corey lives for these moments, so it is it's it's almost like a summer event where you do see everything. Thunder, lightning, hail. I mean, this with a snowstorm. Yeah, you know, and I know Tom likes those colors. And when you're watching your radar, your favorite radar app, you'll see some magenta colors oh, possibly, yeah. which is something you only see in spring and summer. So sure. that's something to look forward to. We wouldn't know magenta if it weren't for Crayola. But thank you, Corey. We uh, <laughs> will be checking back with you in just a little bit as the colors make their way through Colorado on our radar maps. Denver's Mayor Mike Johnston has vetoed the ordinance that would have banned homeless sweeps when temperatures fall below freezing in Denver. This becomes the mayor's first veto. Now, council could override it, but it seems unlikely because council had just narrowly passed it Monday on a 7-6 vote. The city could still offer housing and help, but they could not force homeless people to move. Mayor Johnson said the ban would make it harder to get homeless people inside if it's dangerously cold outside. Supporters say moving people when it's freezing disrupts homeless people who are trying to stay warm. The city of Pueblo is asking for the community's opinion on where to put the debris from the return to nature funeral home. That's the funeral home in Penrose where investigators found 190 bodies that were improperly stored. The EPA is planning to demolish the building starting at the end of the month. Pueblo is now asking for public comment as to whether the debris can be disposed of at the south side landfill. People living there have until Tuesday to share their feedback. There's been a lot of world news just in the past hour. The United States announcing that airstrikes were launched in the Middle East, those in response to the drone attack that had killed three American soldiers. Three rounds of airstrikes targeting Iranian militia positions in parts of eastern Syria. Earlier today, President Joe Biden and the First Lady were welcoming back the bodies of soldiers at the U.S. Air Force Base at Dover. The three had died in a drone attack in a Jordan outpost. The Islamic resistance in Iraq has claimed responsibility. There's much more coming up on this story at 4.30. A man accused of decapitating his father and making a gruesome YouTube video has a history in Colorado. This news out of Pennsylvania is spreading around the world. Our investigative team has uncovered that the suspect was the target of restraining orders when he lived in Colorado Springs. Our Jeremy Hohola has a look now into his past. It was evident to us that he was of clear mind in his purpose and what he was doing. Aside from what his beliefs are, he was of clear mind doing this. Alarming allegations are unfolding in Pennsylvania. Police arrested 32-year-old Justin Mon this week and accused him of shooting and decapitating his father. In a 14-minute YouTube video, Mon ranted about right-wing conspiracies and then held up the head of his father, who was a federal employee. During the video, Justin Moan advises that he is giving the following order for all militia and patriots across the USA to kill federal employees. This morning, prosecutors revealed more about Mon's background, including ties to Colorado. He previously worked and lived in Colorado, working for a contractor for Microsoft Corp. We found three people filed restraining orders against Mon in 2017 when he lived in Colorado Springs. All three were credit union employees who say Mon threatened to precipitate a violent incident that would cause police to brutally attack them. The court records contain an email Mon wrote in which he demands two million before publishing a tell-all book. The next year, Mon filed a long, ranting lawsuit against his employer in which he also demanded money before publishing a book. For now, Mon is behind bars in Pennsylvania, and that YouTube video has been removed. 
but it's quite horrifying how many views we understand it, it had before it was taken down. Obviously, we were able to capture and secure that video because it's pretty self-explanatory as to who's responsible. And in those restraining order cases here in Colorado, Mon eventually agreed not to contact the credit union employees. It does not appear he has a criminal history in Colorado. Tom, back to you. That's such a grisly story, yeah. adding the Colorado component to it, certainly alarming for people who, you know, obviously uh, came upon this, this person earlier in his life. Yeah, and it's clear that he was raising concerns about his threatening behavior back then, according to the public record, six years ago. Yep. Yeah. All right, Jeremy, thanks. Sure. Some of you may have seen smoke if you were in Gilpin County today. This week, the U.S. Forest Service says firefighters in Boulder and Gilpin counties are doing prescribed burns. They're burning piles near Bald Mountain. Evergreen Fire Rescue says smoke could also be seen in their county as well. The driver of a concrete truck was seriously hurt in a crash in Douglas County today. It happened around noon. South Metro Fire says the truck rolled off Cottontail Lane just east of Parker, and it took crews nearly two hours to get the driver out. That person was then taken to the hospital. Today, you may see many people wearing red. It is Go Red for Women's Heart Health. It's to raise awareness about cardiovascular disease, the number one killer of women. Last night, the American Heart Association held their annual Red Dress Collection Concert. It's a fashion show, music event. Many celebrities were there, including the new Miss America from Colorado. We're going to be talking more about Go Red Day with our nine health expert in just a few minutes.